Good say, yeah, yeah. How's um, how's rehab going? Yeah, I didn't um, uh, yeah, because I didn't hear from you, and then the, and the next photo I saw was you. <laughs> you were in surgery, so um, and you yeah. picked it up. You picked it up. First of all, congratulations on your win. Um, thank you. Yeah, there was um, I saw there was a bit of hoo ha going on with that fight as well. Um, I, I I got a glimpse of it, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> I saw a bit yeah. of uh activity going on there, which you know uh we'll get into. But um, first of all, congratulations, yeah. and yeah, how's rehab going? Good. Thank you. Not too bad. I think um, I went to, I had my two week post-op appointment last week and they said it was sort of, I was doing better than I thought that like they thought they expected. So yeah. I guess that's a good thing, but I've just, um, I don't have my sling on at the moment. So if they see this, I'm going to get in trouble, but yeah, it was yeah. All sweaty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I walked for half an hour and it was all sweaty. So I've, I'm airing it out in front of my fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. So um, did this happen? Obviously this happened during the fight and what was it exactly? Was it, your, was it a shoulder or? Yeah, it was my shoulder, but I mean, I think I've had this injury sort of, it was like it was an injury that was coming. Um, yeah, fair my enough. My whole fight yeah. prep, like I've been getting, so I've got I, years ago, bulging discs in my neck. And so my shoulders, have, I've always had problems with my shoulders, but I've always just thought it was the muscles like sort of trying to protect my neck. So they, yeah, they yeah. always tense up. And, and so I just never, I've, I've had, I mean, I get massage and stuff, but I never actually thought I had something wrong with my shoulders. Yeah. So in training, um, like my arms will go dead, but it was, I just always thought it was overuse of, of those sort of muscles. Um, this fight prep, I, like I just, it was the worst fight prep I think I've ever had. Like I was oh, in really? agony every training yeah. um, to a point of tears. Like I, I'd spar and I just, I'd get belted because I couldn't do anything with my left arm. And I'm really lucky that I got to the fight um and then in the fight um is where I guess the tear happened so um it was all the cartilage had had sort of was floating around but then the um the bit that holds your shoulder bone like the ball in yeah yeah, was yeah, torn. yeah. so it was just rolling around so my shoulder was dislocating like every time I moved it was horrible because so, I don't even like cracking my knuckles yeah yeah oh, really yeah yeah it's it almost seems like it was um inevitable that this was gonna happen at some point right and and then surgery was in yeah. the box as well yeah yeah um, I'm just really lucky that it happened in the fight and not the week before the fight yeah and in terms of like being medically cleared like is does that like is it just ultimately your team and your decision do you want to that you want to continue um to the fight is there any kind of screening process where they see if you're medically fit to because being a professional, I'm assuming there's some sort of screening or was it ultimately just your um, decision? Like you could fight, but ultimately there's a there's a risk. Well, I guess, um, I, do you mean as in like my comeback? Like when I come back from this? No, I mean like going into this fight, like you know how you were saying weeks before you were, you were ha you know, you were having really bad pains and you could see some days you were on the verge of crying, right? Because it, yeah. it was obviously, it was obviously killing you. But was there, was there like, was there conversations on whether you can, whether you can compete were you feeling like you well, know what, I didn't I actually know that it was my shoulder until after the fight oh <laughs> so right okay was, okay it okay. was I was at yeah. a point where I was like it's my neck it's my neck and I'll just got to get through this and then we'll like it'll be all right I'll have it okay, makes sense you know, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah, then yeah, it was yeah. in the actual fight so I mean yeah. I guess yeah it was a decision that we just made on our own yeah um but even even when I come back from surgery it's not a thing of me getting cleared like to to let anyone know it's just in my own personal thing like I'm not going to fight until the surgeon and the physio say yeah you're good to go yeah um how long is the how long is kind of the rehab and all that kind of journey back back to I guess you know full full-time training uh what's that looking like for you well they said to me the day of surgery they said normally they'd say five six months but for me four okay yeah yeah <laughs> so, nice <laughs> yeah. um so I'm I'm looking at hopefully fighting March that's pretty um, good. That's a good, you shaved off about two months. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. um, I've already, they've already taken, so I had this big, like I had a sling and it was sort of out here because I had this big bolster thing on it. Um, they told me I'd be wearing that for six weeks and they already took it off me two week, uh, last week. So I was only wearing it for two. Nice. I've got the sling for another three weeks um, and then I'm allowed to start running after three weeks, another three weeks. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I, I guess um, when they've said, I'll be right to fight by March. Like I did explain to them, I trained for, you know, eight to 10 weeks hard out to be ready to fight for March. So, um, and, and they were all good with that. So I oh, think okay. after, 
I think my appointment's December 16 or something after that. I think I'll be able to slowly start doing Yeah, that's things. true because when you start not sure. when you start a proper okay. camp, the training, yeah, it's essentially like anywhere between eight to ten weeks, isn't it? So yeah, technically yeah. you gotta be really ready. Yeah, you gotta be ready. Yeah, prior, just, yeah. Prior. Things I can't do. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I I guess I'll be looking at not throwing hooks as much. <laughs> yeah, um yeah. because of the, the whole around movement. Because that's yeah. the thing I can't do. I can't move my arm up. I can move it that way, but I can't move it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, there'll be certain things. I mean, I won't be going and doing handstands for a little while, I think, but I'll be out of yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about, I guess, just your journey, like into boxing, just like the early beginnings and, and, and just kind of your come up, like what, what kind of led you down this path of, of, um, of, of competing and fighting in, um, in the sport of boxing? Um, I, I started boxing when I was 20, so I was quite, eight, quite old starting it. Um, and it was pretty much, big. I, I did play netball and then, um, but I was just getting, I was getting into going down the wrong track with partying and, and doing all the sort of things that 18, 19, 20 year olds do. do yeah. Um, and it took my, my mum when I, when I growing up, my mum was a heroin addict. So, um, it took for one person pretty much to say, oh, she's going to be just like her mother for me to dig my heels in and and do something to change it. My grandparents took me down to a local boxing gym. Um, we're from Adelaide. So that was um, Fox's gym and Terry Fox. He rode Speedway with my dad. Um, so they knew him from the Speedway and, and I trained with him. I literally had my first spa three weeks before my first fight. And it was kind of like, a, oh, yeah, I'll just do it just to, just to say I've done it. And that was the end of it. I, I just yeah. I got hooked. Yeah, it was, yeah. I, I think it was just how hard it was got me addicted like it was like i'm not gonna let this beat me i'm just gonna keep going and nothing's gonna stop me a good sparring session will do that wouldn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean three weeks. I, I guess as well i was always that you know like terry fox is a real tough like there i didn't learn a lot of skill but i learned toughness yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and it was like i to start with i couldn't hit someone until they hit me and then i'd be like right son <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 that's half of it right just being able to have that uh mental toughness to do whatever 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 you're gonna go through um and then so prior to that prior to you starting around when you were 20 years old like did you have any idea of like combat sports or were you, were you athletic in general like did you love playing sports i know you said you touched on you playing netball and stuff um uh, but were you always kind of interested in 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 sports and 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 in in being like you know being sort of like an athlete in in whatever you were doing or was it just yeah it just crept up on you it was essentially just... I always I always did sport like I was always like you know even at school sports school days and things like that like I always joined yeah, in. I always general, did sport, yeah. but I never ever even thought about being a professional athlete at any yeah. point I, I didn't yeah. when I started boxing I didn't even know it was an Olympic sport to be honest yeah like yeah, I yeah, had yeah. no interest in boxing at all like I mean everyone like I knew the famous ones I knew you know like I, I loved Costa Zoo I loved it, all yeah, the yeah. famous ones but I never I really just didn't I was never thought I'd be doing it yeah like and then at what point did you feel like, okay, this is what I want to do? Um, you know, obviously you would have had a few amateur fights and et cetera. At what point did you turn pro? And when, like, what was that like? At what point did it, did it kind of hit you that, hey, like, I, would, I want to make this my life? Um, well, that's a good question. I think, like, I moved away. I moved out of, Queen, out of Adelaide up to Queensland um, after I went on my first trip with the Australian team which was 2004 Olympic trials obviously for the men not the women mm -hmm. um and I, literally like a month later I was living in Queensland and like I was I got a job I was working and I was boxing and I, I was up here for maybe eight or nine years boxing as an amateur um and then I it was I made an Australian team and we were away for four weeks and at the at that time I think um my my kids were probably three and four mm -hmm. and we, we were meant to be away for four weeks and after three weeks I was like, like nah get me home I can't do it and they told us to make the Olympics because at that point that was when the Olympics were, were like or like for the women as well um they told us we would be we would have to move to Canberra to be the AIS and I was like oh, well, yeah, that's not yep. Yep. I've got I've got a mortgage and I've got kids so that's not happening so I came home and I um I turned pro and literally, as soon as I got home, I think I had my first pro fight 
Oh, three weeks later yeah yeah because I was like I can't wait because then I'll think about it and I'll change my mind and I'll be like yes no yes no and I was like do it let's just jump in and and I did it and it was sort of started from there how was it um how was it like because this is something I've, I've had um I've had um um Arlene Blankow on as well and it's something that always interests me with women in general as well with with kids and just you know and she shared some cl- uh, crazy stories as well in terms of when she was training and having to balance both what was it like for you for you making that decision um and what is it like like what were some of the I guess challenges in terms of being a mom and 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 also um you know putting your head down and fighting professionally um you know um what was that balance like and and I guess, you know, what, what's, what's your kids' thoughts on, on what you do as well? Um, the balance is hard, but people always say to me, how do you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. I just, you just do. Like, um, I, the thing that kept me going, I mean, yeah, yeah, I was, I was getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning running, getting my kids to daycare by, I think daycare opened at 6.15. I was there at 6.30, started work at 7, picked the kids up, got to training, trained from four to five thirty six every night and then came home dinner bed like literally every day and it was hard I was tired but it was the only thing that I did for myself that mm. where I wasn't a robot and um as much as sometimes I look now like because I've got a I've got a two-year-old now and I look back and I think you know when when I'm going through a fight camp because it's so much like there's it's so much bigger now and it's like you know it's there's so much like on my in my career now I just think like, you know, he, he does miss out on quality fun time with me. I mean, like it's still, you know, you know, I cuddle him a lot and I I'm with, I'm there every day, but I feel like sometimes I feel bad because he's missing out on doing the fun stuff because I'm training or dieting or, you know, like all those things that normal people do. Um, but then I've sort of looked at that and thought, but that's just six weeks of, of a lifetime that I'm creating mm. for him and, and a lifetime of change. And like my older two, um, probably not so much my daughter, uh, but my son, my uh, Cooper, he, he begs me not to quit. Like he, he, like when I, after I had Felix, he said to me, he was, I think it was th- uh, 12, 13. And he said to me, um, I- I'll just, I'll come to the gym every day and look after Felix and you can train. Like, I, like, I don't, I don't need to box. You just keep boxing. I want you to come back. And so obviously like I've made that little bit of an impact in their lives of, of who they want me to, they, they know what I want. So they want me to keep yeah trying to get there yeah and probably drawing Um, drawing inspiration from what you're doing as well right well I would hope so I mean I I feel like you know where my life was heading and and the the way I was brought up if I didn't do something drastic to make the change then I was I was just going to be like every other random person and it's kind of not my thing (laughs) yeah 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 I mean it's um it's crazy, like, uh, like obviously, you know, even even I don't, I don't. I mean, I've had amateur fights and whatnot, but I, I, I train continuously and whatnot. But yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, hearing you hearing you say that story. Even when I, I only started kind of training in kickboxing when I was maybe 22, 23, but it was such a it was such a big slap across my face, like you know, coming from that, like you said, when you're 18, 19, 20, and you kind of have no direction but it just kind of really pulls you in and um and it's just amazing to hear like hear that that you know in terms of even just where you felt like your life was heading and and then how that kind of pulled you in and gave you something to really focus on and you know be really passionate about as well you know because uh it's I think it's that hard work it's that you know that you know that to get through the week and and no matter how many days you train it's going to ask a lot of yourself and that and what that ask of you um, there's so much growth and there's so much, uh, you know, there's so much growth and confidence and, 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 and everything there just waiting for you. You know, when you, it's like, it's almost like what you, what you give, you get back, you know, in, in, in tenfolds, I think as well. So, um, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, just, it's also like, it's like, and it's an addiction now too. Like, um, you know, I, I did have a big, a, a hard upbringing. So it's almost like, that's my go-to when things, mm. when I'm having a bad day, I'll go for a run or, yeah. you know, like it, it's my way of dealing with, with anything. Yeah. Really. Your, me- your medicine essentially. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. yeah. Um, it seems like your grandparents played a big part in your life too. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't know if my grandma would, you know, rest her soul, she passed away recently, but as I actually told you about that, but um, I don't know if she would have ever taken me into a boxing gym, but uh, yeah, it seems like, uh, it seems like uh, they knew, they knew what you needed. 
and uh, yeah, I, yeah I guess so yeah um my, my grandparents were probably the saviors in my life like yeah. um and you know I did the whole when I was 13 14 I did the whole got in trouble with them went back to live with my mom got sick of my mom's lifestyle ran away lived with my grandparents I did that like I you know I'm not like I, I was human I was I was a shit teenager too mm. um but I um that they really gave me any sort of stability in my life. Like they did anything, anything that was good in my life. It was pretty much, it came from my grandparents. Mm. And what I know that you spoke about a little bit about the, the, you know, when turning pro and obviously the, that first fight and, and how that kind of like completely, you would just pretty much uh, completely bought yourself into, into, uh, into boxing. But is there, was there anything specific in those early stages that, you know, other than obviously the, the typical, um, you know, the tough work and, and, and what goes into the training, but it was anything specific, like what, what did it do to you or what did it give you that felt like, man, I need to, I need to give my hold to this. Um, I guess a sense of control. Like I was in control of, of my life and, and where I was able to lead it. Like um, rather than, living day to day and, and just sort of hoping and praying that I didn't turn out like my mum. I mean, mm. my mum, it sounds horrible, the things I say, but she was a beautiful person. She was just very overtaken by drugs. Mm. Um, and I, and I do understand that like she, she, she suffered depression. My dad died when I was two. So, and she was there, she saw it. Um, so she suffered bad depression and, and, her way of coping with things was through drugs. Mine is through sport. Yeah. And what's, um, what's like a typical training week for yourself? Like, you know, what's, what's a typical training week? Um, you know, say, say, say 10, you know, 10 to eight to 10 weeks out going into a training camp. What's, what's a typical week? So I run seven days a week. I literally run every day when I'm in camp. So for 10 weeks, I run every day. Um, I do, um, I box six days a week and I do zoo set the zoo strength and conditioning um, three days a week. Three days a week. That's a crazy schedule. On those three days, I'm doing three sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that include? And that's okay. hard. I don't know. Have you seen the zoo stuff? It's insanely hard. Yeah, yeah. I've I've done um I've done like we have like a strength and conditioning facility like not too far. So I, I used to do strength and conditioning um three days a week like uh, with some of the some of the other boxes and stuff like that. So um so yeah like I would, and that was a morning session and an avo session, but three sessions is you know obviously this is being amateur, but I was lucky enough that I got a lot of my the people around me were professional athletes. So it was very easy for me. I always say it's so easy because you just know who to follow. You don't have to sit there and do the thinking for yourself. Uh you know you just follow the guys in front of you. But um but um but that's yeah that's I, I mean that's pretty pretty hectic schedule but i mean i guess that's that's why you know you are where you are right um otherwise uh you know otherwise you know you'd be falling short so but what's um what's that like what's what's your day like by the end of it like so do you generally do strength and conditioning in the morning i'm assuming or um well i do so i i generally i get up early and run um and coop stays home with my baby um and then I do my boxing and if I'm doing zoo that day, I do that. I pretty much, I've done three sessions before lunch. Yeah, and I yeah. come home, like I, I, I meal prep on the weekends anyway. So I yeah. come home, eat, have a rest. And then I go and pick up my baby from daycare, get to my, cause I, I run my own gym as well. Um, oh, and nice. then that okay. pretty much yeah. from four o'clock every night I'm running, running my gym. Yeah. 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 That's a hectic schedule. <laughs> yeah. So, so literally by lunchtime, I've done three sessions. Yeah, well, yeah, by yeah. 11 o'clock, I've done three sessions. That's crazy. What's um, what's nutrition like? Um, is it you you just because you train so hard, kind of you, you tend to eat eat whatever? Are you specific about what you eat? Is there anything specific on your kind of meal plans? Um, I know obviously a lot have nutritionists working with them and stuff. So, um, so when I'm in um fight prep, I I try and like I eat. I I mean my favorite thing. I wake up in the morning. I'm like I can't wait for breakfast. I eat like fruit salad, fruit yogurt. For breakfast um and then I try and eat in my mind like I eat carbs before training and then I I just try and stick to protein at dinner um the last probably four or five weeks of my 
fight prep, like my last two fight preps, making bantamweight, um, I've eaten salmon and veggies every day. <laughs> yeah, that's the go-to, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. People are like, let's go. And I'm like, I'm not eating seafood. Yeah, And yeah. I'm not big on seafood, so it's salmon. Like, it probably should be fish, but it's salmon. Salmon and veggies every day Yeah. Um, for the last <laughs> month of my fight prep. Yeah, and that, and that was just because someone said to me, like, because I was eating like chicken and veggies, or, or you know, steak and veggies, and and someone said to me, you've got to stop eating. Um, it's 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 harder to break down, so you've got to eat seafood. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every day. I guess if you had to eat any fish, at least salmon, you could, you know, you could stomach it for that period. I think, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, to be honest, like I, like I said, I got to point a point where I was craving it. I was like, can't wait to eat it. But then after my fight, I'm like. Do not put a piece of broccoli in <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's um, what's kind of uh, your? I guess you know, especially now, like so, you've you've won the was it the the WBC featherweight title? Is that right? Um, the I got I got the Bantam. WBC super bantamweight silver Bantam. title. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is like a it's like an interim world title. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was. Oh, that was years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what What was that like? Was that Was that kind of your first taste of a uh, of silverware? Um. No. I so I won the my first title that I won was the WBF. Um. Oh, that was the Queensland, was it? Well, Queensland. No, oh. that. Oh, I won a Queensland title, but yeah. Um. And then after that, I fought for the WBA. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hang on, I got to delete this call. Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I just had a call coming through. I'm like, no, no, that's all good. Yeah. Um, so I, I won, I fought for the WBA world title in Korea, uh, South Korea. Yeah. Um, I lost that. And then I, a month later, I fought for the WBF world, t- world featherweight title in um, South Africa. Wow. And I, and I, I, I fought a, an undefeated fighter there and, and I beat her. I won that. And then I got the WIBA super bantamweight title not too long after that. Um, and then it went from there to the WBC silver. Right. Okay. And then I got a WBO regional. And then after that, it was the Aussie title last year. Yeah. Yeah. What was that experience like going to Japan? Like, I mean, that would have been one of the, I guess, one of the first kind of really big fights, a big stage in terms of just what was at stake? What was that experience like for you going overseas? Um, and we'll touch on South Africa too, because I always love hearing stories about uh, fighters that travel too, because this is just always something cool to come out of that. But what was that experience like uh, for yourself fighting overseas um, too, which is not, not many will ever get to experience um, at all really. No. Yeah. Well, I was going, when I went to South Korea, I was fighting, the girl that I was fighting was, um, she was defending it for a seventh time, I think. Um, it was, a, it was, you know, they treated us well. Not many people spoke much English. So we had someone yeah. there that was helping us. It was actually the same guy that um, Inoue had helping him. His name's Lauren. He was oh, okay. in Korea helping us. Yeah. Um, so he was obviously like took us around and, and helped us with translation and stuff like that. But like they treated us really well. I've never been like I've been as a pro um, to South Korea, South Africa, Canada, New Zealand, like I've never been treated bad. Our Argentina, even Argentina, we were we were warned that they wouldn't treat us nice. They were they were great to us. Like wow. I've never been treated bad. Um, and I guess as well because I travelled so much in the amateurs, it was it was just mm. it was I was used to it. Um, I actually like to travel. I like to be the underdog because there's less pressure on you. Mm. Mm. Um, like I mean, even in my last few fights here, there's been so much pressure on me that it's. I mean, it's. I'm, I'm obviously someone at. The, once I get in the ring, I deal with pressure well, but um, I like to be the underdog. Like my, mm. when I fought in Argentina, I had people booing me to the ring and they were like, it took me an hour to get back to my change room, getting out of the ring because everyone wanted photos. And so I, I, I love to win a crowd over. Yeah. It almost seems like uh, just that underdog mentality is what got you into this sport, right? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I like yeah. People it's almost them. like you were set up to fail when you did it, you know? So, um, yeah. what was the South African, like, what was that experience like, especially fighting an undefeated fighter in their home soil? That would have been some beautiful, uh, that would have been a beautiful moment. Yeah, South Africa was yeah. amazing. My coach at the time was South African as well, Phil Holiday. Um, so, like, you know, where he had, he's still got family there. So, we, we were looked after pretty well there. And, um, but, you know, they tried to 
scare us a little bit before we got there and, and yeah, try yeah, and make yeah. us think that we were going to have lions roaming our hotel rooms and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah. I was like, yeah, I wasn't yeah. born yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, like they were good. They, it was, it was, it was a good, good experience. Like I, 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 don't, I haven't had a really bad experience. Um, Argentina, my change room was the men's toilet. Oh, really? <laughs> which were blocked. Yeah. That wasn't overly nice, but you know they yeah. did treat us well. Yeah, yeah. And um, how did um, how did that fight in South Africa go? Like how how what ended up playing out? out with, knocked her out in a in the seventh round, I think, with yeah. a body shot. Nice. And what was the crowd like after that? Good. Yeah, I, yeah. I was a little bit worried, going like, am yeah. I am I gonna am I gonna live? Um, but no, the, the crowd was really good. Like I was even at the airport the next day, like I had like African people coming up wanting photos and I was like, okay, sweet. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty cool like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you kind of draw your, um, you know, being in the game, I guess for a long time, if you include your amateur career as well, what are some of the things that you kind of draw your inspiration from? Um, I know you, your kids will probably play a big part, a big part in that. Uh, but you know, is there, is there things that you kind of draw inspiration from that gets you kind of motivated every day? Like what are, what are some of the things that, um, you know, is it, whether it's, you know, it's there's certain idols or is it certain things that you kind of look to, to be inspired around you or what you do, like what kind of gets you motivated to kind of get up out of bed and, um, you know, even before getting to the, the gym, you know, it's that run, that run alone, um, you know, um, what gets you kind of motivated every day? What inspires you? Um, I used to be my dad, um, because my dad was, was a really loved person in his sport and he died in, in sport. And, um, my mum sort of took his name through the dirt. So my, my, when I started, it was to make his name proud again. Like, you know, when people said the O'Connell name, they'd, they'd think of, you know, people that are making a difference and being like doing good rather than my heroin addict mum that did some shit things. Um, but and then I guess it was my kids. But at the end of the day, I guess it's me. Um, I motivate myself because I'm so stubborn and I don't want to, I don't want to um, let anyone down or let myself down. So it's, it's like, I have this little argument with my head. Like I can't let, I can't, I don't want to go, but you can't let that be. Yeah? So get up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I, I really like as much as, you know, a lot of people have other athletes in there, you know, motivational quotes that they look to. I, like I really, I, I have to say I motivate myself and I inspire myself because I know who I want to be and no one else is going to do it for me. Mm. It's almost like you keep yourself accountable, right? Uh, which yeah, is the so most that, important that's my thing. motivation. If yeah. you don't get up and get your ass there, then you're yeah. not going to be that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. What's um, what's what's your mindset going into like fight week and fight week leading up to that? You know, leading up to you making that walk, but What's kind of like fight week mentality for you? Are you, uh, are you a type of person that just stays relaxed? Uh, what's kind of going through your head like uh, during that during fight week leading up to that fight? So I don't know. Like I feel like it's I've done it so many times now that I shouldn't tell people, but I really don't think I'll ever change it, and I'll probably don't want it to change because I know I turn it on when I need to. But I am the most nervous fighter you'll ever come across yeah I literally sit in the change room I'm like what if I forget what to do who throws the best punch or you know (laughs) what if I fall over getting into the ring or or what if I like what if I forget how to box like I know boxing better than I know anything else in my life yeah um but literally the second they play my music I'm like bam get me there yeah yeah. like I have a it's funny because um years ago I've said like I've, I've been saying every fight like whose idea was this what an idiot. Like, why are we here again? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I say that before every fight, like whose idea was this? I think, I think, if, I think if the day ever comes that you stop saying it, your whole team's going to be worried. So I think, uh, yeah, probably. You know, yeah. So it's probably a good luck charm if you, if you, if you are in that, in that state of mind. So, um, yeah. and in terms of like recovery, do you, do you do anything specific in terms of recovery um, with your training and stuff? Um, I, I get massage, I, I massage a physio. Um, other than that, I'm a little bit old school in the whole recovery way. Like I, I, I try to ice baths yeah. and all that sort of thing. But no, to me, I recovery is sleep. Like I sleep when I can and, mm. and that's my recovery. I'm, I try and make sure like my baby goes to bed at eight o'clock and I'm in bed with him. So, mm. um, that's my recovery. 
Mm. I'm a little bit old school in that way. I, I, I really should stretch, but I barely even do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, sleep, sleep is probably one of the biggest ones anyway, right? So yeah. at least if you hit that quota, it'll be all right. Um, and in terms of like the state of boxing, what's kind of like, it seems like there's such a massive rush in terms, just to, yeah, in terms of just boxing in Australia in general now. What's your thoughts on it? Like, do you feel like that it, there's a bit of a, a there's a bit of a climb and a rise in interest and and people kind of tuning into into watching um you know our athletes here um you know making the walk yeah absolutely i think it's yeah. it's awesome like when i first started boxing it was it was like no one cared but whereas now you know you've got people like tim zoo jeff on there they're all household names um hopefully george after the weekend um you know they they're all names that people you, you people outside of boxing know um, and that that's pretty cool. Um, it, it's yeah, it's been really good to to see. That probably the only downfall is now it's it's so big is there's so many people on social media that should not have social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's so many <laughs> keyboard warriors around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. But it's probably yeah. the only downfall of how big it's getting. But I mean, they're always going to happen anyway. Yeah, yeah. We they yeah. I mean, people like that, they've, they've been fed the, the platform to do that as well, right? So it's just like, yeah. you know, I know it's crazy, right? It's like the age old, it's the age old thing. Like even when I grew up, like having an older brother, like, yeah, it's just, you know, it's like you say anything, it's, you see these people, it's different, right? It, but, yeah. through it, you know, and it's a whole different ball game when you run into them as opposed yeah. to, as opposed to, you know, being on the other side of a, of a LCD screen and, 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 and typing away, but yeah. Um, it's, is, um, what's, what's kind of your, what's kind of your future path? Like, what do you see yourself? Where are you kind of heading? Is there, is there any kind of immediate goals or long time goals? Like, you know, what's, what's kind of next for you and what kind of direction are you heading in terms um, of just I'd like competing? Think, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to think in my next couple of fights that I, I will get big world title shot oh, like sure. I'm the yeah. I'm the WBA number one ranked and W uh, the IBF number two so um I'm, if 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 the rules were there to be followed I guess um I would be next in line for either one of those belts but um unfortunately it doesn't always happen that way um but I would love to think that you know something something will come up and and you know my time will come where I get that big shot that would be amazing I mean yeah, it's, it's just good to see a lot of the, um, especially in boxing, um, you know, a lot of the Aussie, Aussie fighters now starting to kind of get into that, that international stage and there's big fights and get exposure as well. And, and at the same time, I know that in MMA that we've shown it how we can compete with the best of them, you know, um, around the world. And, and boxing was always that it was always that sport where it's like you had to go to Europe or America and, and you probably, you know, people still do to, to go sparring and, and get some high quality training, but it's good to see a lot of homegrown people being able to get to that big stage now and, and, and have those big fights and get eyes on them and, and also put some respect on, on, on the country's name as well. And the people kind of coming out of here. Right. And then, and then you of all people would know having a gym that, like the trickle down effect of just having people inspired by it. And then the quality gets better. Right. Cause like pioneers like yourself and everyone else set the stage, but then it's also that generation after saying, Hey, these are the guys who got to, you know, either be good as or be better. So that we kind of carry the mantle. Right. So it yeah, seems sure. like, yeah, Australia's like in terms of boxing, even internationally is starting to get a bit more exposure and starting to kind of get the opportunity to, to showcase what we can do as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been really good to see. Like we you know, we used to get laughed at. Even even in the amateurs, like you know, we've always been known as um like not now, but back years yeah, ago back, before yeah. we, we got um we've always sort of been known as um just tough. Mm. Like you're always they like all the European countries, they all always sort of say about our us Aussies. Well, they used to say about us Aussies that you know you're in a hard fight, but you like, you win. Mm, <laughs> like yeah, we're just yeah, tough yeah. it's like we're stupid tough yeah um, yeah yeah and and it's a bit sort of now like you know we're going to the olympics and we're getting to the medal rounds and and you know harry harry won a medal where you know that that could have been the start of something awesome for the amateurs and and we're getting recognized in the pros like we've had like Dempsey mckean and, and liam paro overseas now um with matchroom like it's it's huge mm. 
yeah, I mean, Matchroom seems to have a very keen interest in our guys and girls here too. So, which is which is really good. And um, what's uh, I guess kind of to a segue to kind of you know finish it off. But like, what are some of the? And it's amazing because you got to share. You get to share. You got to share something personal, um, which I think is amazing. Um, and 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 I think relatable for a lot of people with with just how you came up and um, and your history, you know, with your mom and and whatnot. But what are some of the, I guess, the gems and advice that you can give to people that are of similar path, if not, are trying to kind of find their way? What is something that you can kind of pass on to them based on the journey that you've been on so far? Um, probably just know what you want and don't give up until you get it um, because it's, it's so easy to give up, but that's, that's what everyone's doing. Like, you know, that, that's what, that's what if, you, if you don't want to be average, then don't give up because average people give up. Mm. and in terms of um in terms of just your i guess kind of your legacy what is by the by the time you decide that hey i don't want to get up and go for a run anymore uh what 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 do you kind of see when i'm 90 (laughs) yeah yeah well that's you know i think 90 will be the new maybe 50 i don't know we'll see you know (laughs) it's all it's all it's all changing Uh, i'm sick 56 year olds at at the the strength and conditioning gyms like doing you know doing the most crazy shit in the world and i'm thinking you get you make me so happy because i want to be that person like i don't want to stop doing that when i'm you know you know uh 70 i would love to yeah it's crazy some of them have a heart rate like a healthy heart rate of a 25 year old you know when they when you really measure it up so it's just it's such a it's such a crazy thing to see but um you know because like you said when you were coming up boxing wasn't really i guess i wouldn't say it wasn't recognized but it, it's not what it is now and 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 part of like me doing my podcast and whatnot is it's kind of almost giving the flowers and, and celebrating people that have helped build the sport but just have never had the um the the, the platform or even people to really understand hey like these guys are pioneers, um, you know, and I feel like you fall into that category that by the time you decide to hang it up, a lot of people are going to look at what you did for the sport and just your, your place in the sport and, um, and, and, and realize how much was contributed by yourself um, amongst, amongst many others. So what's kind of like, you know, what is it that you want to kind of feel at the end of it? I mean, it's hard to tell when your journey hasn't finished yet, but what is it that at the end of it, you know, like, because this whole journey, even into boxing, kind of started from a really bad place, right? Um, it came from a really a negative environment, um, and you built something beautiful from that. So what is it that you want to kind of see yourself when you look at the mirror by the end of it all? Um, I, I guess satisfied. Like, I mean, at the moment, I'm not satisfied yet. Um, so many people say to me, you know, you've got nothing to prove. You've, you've done so much. You've done this. You've done that. Like, and, and I should be proud. And and yes, I am proud of what I've done, but I'm not finished yet and I don't mm. feel satisfied of what I've done. So I won't be able to finish until I'm satisfied. So I guess I want to be able to um, look at myself and, and have no regrets. I, I didn't I didn't quit too, too early. I didn't quit too late. Mm. Um, I just want to feel satisfied with my career. And right mm. now I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Look, Shannon, I won't take too much of your time. I know, I know it's, uh, it's crazy out there, but, um, um, you know, we're training and et cetera with your schedule, but I really appreciate you giving me your time. Um, you're someone I've been wanting to talk to for a while now, and I'm glad we got to kind of make it happen. Um, and I wish you nothing but the best. Um, and I know that that world title shot's going to be around the corner sooner than you think. And, um, and um, I'll be looking forward to seeing what happens in March as well, um, you know, uh, in terms of your next fight and, 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 and where it's happening and, and who your opponents are. And, um, um, and yeah, and I, and I just, you know, I think I, think I speak for a lot of fans, um, boxing fans, purists, that um, I think we appreciate what you've given to the game. And, and I know that you're not done yet, but I think you've done so much already to this point that... Um, that it should kind of be celebrated as well. So, um, you know, looking forward to it. And, um, and I think it's inspiring as well. Um, I know it sounds a bit cliche being, you know, being a mum with kids and, and doing such a, such a, a sport where it asks so much of you, um, you know, and I think it's just, it's, it's inspiring to show other people and other women that, hey, like you can come out of your comfort zone and, and be able to balance it all. And, um, and we got to, me and my wife, we've got a, we've got a 12, 
well, two week year old boy now. So he's uh, two weeks old. So I, you know, oh, we always, right. yeah. So I always, uh, we just realized that when people say sleep and lack of sleep, I'm like, you just get shit sleep done. Is not a thing <laughs> yeah, you, get yeah, yeah, you get shit done. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, you know, I was like, I realize now that how much you can actually do with lack of sleep, you know, uh, I don't I didn't, I didn't think till you have kids, you really realize what you can really do with lack of sleep. So, um, yeah. but um, no, it's, it's honestly, it's so inspiring and, um, and, and um, I look forward to, I look forward to what's next and, and, um, and everything that comes afterwards. And um, I appreciate you giving me a time as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. No, thanks.